Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron. I'm Tom. And we are back with a Hyper Pulse Uplink. Very exciting. Uh, all about the clan invasion. Yeah. So we've got, we've got four topics on the agenda tonight. Yeah. Topic the first. We're going to talk about uh, the after action reporting, if you will, on the last five battle reports. Yeah. We've got five out. We cranked them out hard. Some um, controversy. There was some controversy. Uh, I, I think it. I think people it's were expecting the, the the clans to win. Uh, so you know, and they, they did win uh, two out of the five. Although, admittedly, in one of the matchups, it was clan v clan, so clan couldn't lose. Yeah. Uh, but you know, there were some expectations that were uh, out of alignment. I think. So we're going to talk about. Yeah. It. We're going to yeah. talk about why. We'll, we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about why. Yeah. Second, uh, we got the Battle of of Tukia going on. Yeah. Uh, very exciting we're, stuff. We're so prepping for it. We're prepping for it. We got the book. We're taking a look at it. Uh, Ray over at Catalyst and Aaron, kind enough to send me a, an early uh, early copy of the PDF. They are great guys. Great guys so yeah. I was able to kind of peel through it with the team ahead of time. Of course, we weren't really allowed to talk about it until it was released, but it's here now. It is it's here now. Uh, the hardbacks for sale on their site, which I want to get. I uh, got the PDF. I know, I know some other guys are, I believe it's in the Kickstarter for order as well, if you want to add it to your Wave 2. Although, by the time this video is released, it'll be over, Tom. Oh, really? I think the, tomorrow, the, manager the 22nd, is that we're filming this on the 21st. The 22nd, Tom, is the last, the last day the pledge manager's done. So we got to talk about that. Which is probably good for my, for my checkbook. Yeah. Um, third, and maybe somewhere mixed in with the whole Tukey conversation, we're going to look at Tom's Com Guard. Uh, he's been hard at work. Paint, painting my little heart out. <laughs> they look really good. It's been a lot of work. Uh, so we're just going to talk about his, his I tips. I might start crying, techniques. to be honest. Uh, I'm <laughs> thinking about how much time I spend on these freaking models. Oh, my goodness. But it's Yeah, Yeah. well, they look good. I, I can't wait to see them on the table uh, across from my clan wolf. See, I didn't know if we told them who... who uh, I mean, that's you know, part it's, of the It's happening. It's happening. We're going to talk all about all that. And then, you know what? Why don't we talk a little bit about the Kickstarter? Yeah, wave all two. Right. Wave two. About to close? Um, yeah, so. Will this get out before that or no? Probably not. Probably not. Okay. So it would be a miracle if I could cut this in one evening and have it out tomorrow. But you never know. I did take off work tomorrow. <gasps> but this probably will come out after the holidays. Yeah. So, guys, stick around. All that is coming right up. Alright guys, we are back, uh, and we're going to start talking about the clan invasion bat reps. Yeah. Alright, so expectation was that the clans are really good and they were going to win all the time. Uh, reality was the clans, there was a learning curve. Uh, they didn't do so great. Yeah. Although I thought all the battle reports were very close. I thought the Ghost Bear one, you know, Kevin Kevin was of course the, the first guinea pig. Uh, yeah. and, and I think that bat rep was was a little bit one side. Well, not totally one sided, but I think, I think I had a, a pretty solid victory in that one yeah my feeling i feel like kevin a lot of time goes kind of crazy like digging into like the lists well i mean you know it's tough too because what you don't realize is the um the cost of the clan max right and what Sky makes rockets. them expensive yeah. what makes them expensive is a high tmm right yeah. and so you look at mechs like the fenris or the ice ferret right and the viper and the executioner they mm. cost a fortune i mean you have a 95 ton mech with a ton of armor and decent damage and a TMM of two because it has mask, right? Which makes it run really yeah. fast. Uh, and that, that just drives the cost up. And right. so the downside to it is that really small amount of internal structure because of the XL engines. So to do all of that firepower, to do all the running, yeah. the TMM, you sacrifice your internal structure. And right. when it's a game of attrition a lot of the times, yeah. a game of having to do risky maneuvers to get yourself in positions, it's it's a it's a like you said a knife edge you know right just one bad turn one bad dice roll or one good dice roll like what how many of those you got like i had some good ones in ours three thrown our yeah, last some one really good our yeah, one. Oh, that man. Windfield one yeah. so good the double kill <laughs> mm. infamous but yeah so i was gonna say like it was it was actually to our we had talked so much about the clans and i think my expectation was that if it was possible for the clans to win it was going to be really tight yeah. Um, because of that, just from our experience playing so many inner sphere bat reps with all sorts of different um, situations and, and lance sizes, and we know what works and what doesn't. And yeah. like when you when you lack uh, survivability, it really is tough to win a, a, a mission style game. 
and even probably any kind of game, to be honest. But yeah. Clans won two, right? Two out of five. We said yes. that. Yeah. Really, one um, out of four, if you want to kind of. Yeah, clan on clan, right? Right. But, but I mean, but they were all close, like you said, and I think they were really fun. The Jade Falcon ones were very close, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I had a blast playing them. They're they're really fun to play on the board. And then the the thing I was going to say about this perception of the clans, not to take over, no. with do it with your opinion, with my opinion on Just this. Just drive it. But like when you know we were reading the Tukiad, um PDF, um, and when you read the lore about the clans, it actually kind of lines up because you, when you start reading the lore, you realize like the clans weren't this invincible force right. that I think people have a perception of. They won a lot of battles against poorly defended worlds, um, you know, and, right. fringe and, like militia units that, yeah. that were under, you know, undersupplied. Right. right. But as soon as they faced a, uh, like a like, front line unit, exactly yeah. like a Comstar or anything that was prepared, they're sort of thin numbers, and and their the style of battle they do, you know, where they're outnumbered a lot of the time, which is what actually ends up happening. Yeah. Um, they if they win, they're eking out like almost just a, a break even. Yeah. Um, and all this, and that's what you get. So, like a bat, a battle report is not a lore battle where they're fighting against some like backwater militia, right? Yeah. You're playing against a, 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 a what would you call it? A competitive opponent. So it's you a always point, have point to balance keep that. Game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a point balance game, you have to think of it as like basically all everybody you're fighting is like a comp star level because they're coming into it with everything they can. Yeah. And, and yeah, and there's no force imbalances built into the game, like there isn't some of the lore. Mm -hmm. um, because that's what gives you narrative arc, right? It, that's what gives you that sort of uh, drama of, will this underpower the underdog? Will they pull it out or get steamrolled by the clan? And that's where you know a lot of this intrigue comes from. If every fight was like, oh, we both kind of were equal forces and we fought and it was over, like you don't write books about that a lot of the time. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Right, but even still, the battle know, of the in those, right? Like, right. It, it, yeah. it, it's interesting. I mean, I love everything you're saying, and of course, I come at everything from a numbers angle. I love the the fluff element that you're talking about here, and even in a points balance game, like the narrative elements come from you know, like the double kill, right? And like, it it really is truly epic because it's not like you have this incredible insurmountable hurdle. I was, you know, I was thinking about it while you were talking, and I, I would love it if somebody would, you know, deconstruct one of the books into a point value or a BB battle, like, match, right? Like, you oh, know I'm these sure guys are, like, right. skill 5, skill 6 scrubs, right, against these, like, skill 2. It's like they got, like, you know, two Timberwolves and a Vulture, and they've got, like, you know, four Bulldogs <laughs> or whatever. It's like, what's the what's the PV differential there? You know, probably astronomical, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, and, yeah, not to say that all lore is <clears throat> like that, right? There's probably... No, there's some, there's some yeah. good. Although I was just reading one... Um, it was, it was very well written, but of course, again, I'm looking at it from the tabletop perspective. Right. Uh, and, and I think it's the Draconis Combine. Uh, I think it's Smoke Jaguar. And they send down a bunch of, of elementals. You know, they like the one elemental dude's like, I bid a point of elementals, right? And, oh, right. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the and whole he's up world against, with like, point of Yeah, he's up against like, this whole, I think it's just vehicles, but he's up against like, this whole cadre. And they, they booby trap the forest with napalm. And the elementals like go in, they're like, there's no one around. <laughs> like, you know, like right. the bird like flies out of the bush. Oh. And then the like the Draconis Combine guy's like, nah, and he like hits the button and the whole forest explodes <laughs> into fire. And they're like, totally got these guys, and the elementals come like walking like, out of yeah. completely flavors. undamaged. Yeah, yeah. Completely yeah. undamaged. Like the one guy's got like a bead of sweat going down his forehead, and like you know, like on the tabletop, that wouldn't happen. Like Right, that's not you, you know, automatically like, walk out. Because if my aerospace fighter hits him with like, you know, inferno bombs or whatever, they're gonna die, right? Yeah. So anyway. Anyway, I digress. Yeah. And another, and it was funny too. And, and then, you know, to to move on from that specific point about the lore to another point about the lore. You know, we've talked about what people think the strengths of the clan are. You mm. know, the long range battle and all this kind of stuff. Right. And the lore kind of touches on that sometimes. They say, you know, oh, the clans aren't used to fighting in terrain. They're really because because their whole like honor. Uh, right. I remember what it's called. <clears throat> challenge. Zelbergen. Zelbergen. Yeah. Which I mispronounced several times in the. Zelbringen. Yeah, I don't know. Zelbringen. 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 Well bargained and done or bargained well and done? Well bargained and done. That's what we say. Yeah. It's, been, it's been printed both ways. But but because of that, you know, their their whole sort of combat experience has been this like sort of like call out 
in like a parking lot and they like duke yeah, it out. They right. They're not like, like dumpster. Yeah. yeah, there's not like this gorilla thing going on. And I don't think, uh, yeah, and after playing this game too, uh, again, translating to tabletop, I don't think there is such a thing as good at long range or, or like optimized for long range. Like there's no sniper units really. There's mechs that have like long range, but in, uh, especially in alpha and even in uh, classic, for the most part, like you're not going to build a whole force because the map's not big enough. There, there is not a single unit in the game that does substantially less damage at short range than it does at long range. There are yeah. zero units. There's no unit that does like eight damage at long range and one at short range. Like, cl what, what about in classic with like a P with a minimum range? Like even PC still, or like you, I mean, even the then minimum still, range then is so have laser close. And stuff. Right? I mean, I mean yeah. even still, the, and, and minimum range is factored into Alpha Strike, right? But you're That's talking right, about yeah. a point of damage in Alpha Strike, or a plus two, you know, which again, like, look at the, the statistical, like, impact of that on your average calculated damage. Like, it's mediocre at best, right? Yeah. Like, mechs, I mean, this game is designed such that the closer you get, the more dangerous you are. Unless yeah. you're all PPCs and LRMs, and oh, even right. then, yeah. just like, you know, just stay back at, yeah. at seven inches. Uh, or seven hexes, whatever. But, you know, largely, again, stay at medium range, right? I mean, yeah. ver there, to your point, there are no mechs that are so good, so much better at long range, you would want to keep them at, like, 30 inches or, you know, 60, depending right. on what. Right, I mean, unless, again, there's there's situational things where you're fighting a force. Like, I've done that where I've picked a... F I remember one, the the quadrant one, what is mm. that called, Taken Hold? Uh, or seize Ground. Seize Ground, yeah. So for a Seize Ground, I picked a bunch of mechs with, like, no, no long range, you know, it was all medium range and then like you know that's a good one where you could sort of kite them a little bit because they literally can't shoot you back and then it's worth trying to pip them down a little bit i want to digress for a moment maybe can i digress i mean i'm digressing so far off the map but you you cannot win war games with a short range force unless there are rules to support it so, for example, let's talk about 40k. Oh, I Orcs I sucked say for corn. years. Corn, corn sucked for years. And then they implemented, like, all, right. Yeah, just rush forward. You can, like, board. right. It's like you deploy your orc transport, it moves 24 inches, then they can have this rule where they charge. I mean, I don't yeah, know yeah. if all that Gene stuff's Steelers, still around. Right, right, right. Like, where they, they pop they up out of the yeah, shadows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, you have to implement special rules to make these units effective. Oh, man. Yeah, if we right. had drop ships in this game. Or, right, yeah, you airdrop them out of the ground, yeah, yeah. like, or airdrop them out of the air onto the ground, like, and that happens in the lore sometimes, right? Like, for sure. Um, you know, and they have, like, Halo Drop mechs? They do, yeah, they all Halo Drop. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, so I, all of them can do it. They don't even need jump jets. Um, That's sick. You know, and there are rules, I believe, in Alphas. I know in Total Warfare there's rules for it. And, and we could certainly, you know, like, play that way where you keep units in reserves and we could come up with rules for all that stuff. But um, ah, I hate it. I hate it about 40 cam and I hate it about this it's game It's just too. <laughs> because it's so, it's, yeah, I mean, the, the reality is a dropship you have from like Forge World that like could kill half my army. <laughs> oh, too. the drop pods. The drop pods. Drop my pods God. were fantastic. You drop pod so like cheesy. flamer veterans behind your jeans dealers. And there was like all. a year where that was the tournament list, right? You had like thirty drop pod, and we just and just yeah, it's so yeah, it was so good, it was so good. I, I'm just collecting dots now yeah. um, because they changed the rules. Because again, when things like that, when it when when you make these right, rules, right. they become broken. And I the one know. thing I I loved about I like... coming back to BattleTech was there's none of that. that right? It's happen. a strategic game. You come yeah. onto the board. You need to position, I'm, you need to shoot. Yeah. You know. I'm going to say something controversial too. I'm going to say, say that's 40K doing fan service, right? That all the people in Battletech are doing the same thing the 40K fans did, and what did they end up with? A game that has broken ass rules that they have to keep innovating on because right. they keep breaking right. them because people keep saying, and then well, what about my unit? Codex. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's good for the game company, but right. bad for the player. Like, yeah, I mean, that's why we stopped playing. Right? Yeah, like, it's just like having a conservative much. game where, like, yeah, you can be like, this should be a different way, but not giving into that and keeping it a simple game. Right. That's right. balanced. And, it, and honestly, reflects, valuable to me, in my yeah. opinion. Like, I mean, if you look at modern, I'm not a military historian, but like, if you look I at am, the advances no, kidding, in, in in modern, like, what are they looking for? They're looking for you know tanks and they just shoot farther, faster, harder, right? They're not like, looking for accurate. like, yeah. how can we airdrop our tanks to the point <laughs> blank range? Yeah, you know. Um, Yo, if you want to talk about like, like future war Abr stuff, I'm very into that. Did, I just read we something do like the Abrams, like they they came up with a shell that could hit from like ten miles away. Yeah, yeah. That thing, it's like crazy. Yeah, Could you imagine 10 miles? You're just like, 
Probably and probably moving too. <laughs> the Abrams has some amazing stability. It's crazy, it's yeah. Wild. And then the armor that's one third of the weight. Of, did you see the foam? Yeah, the, yeah. It's like hexagon shaped. It's like some sort of crazy. Yeah, the honeycomb stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, crazy. Anyway, now we're really off on a tangent. Oh yeah. So I want to talk about the numbers. I want to get back to the game. Oh I yeah. I want to talk about why I think the clans were losing. There's a couple of reasons. You better not say you're a better player. I'm a better player. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, Douche. Uh, one, this game's over. I think we uh, were doing ourselves a disservice by trying to conform to the notion that clans need higher skill value. Yeah. You know, we have found through battleetics, through everything, that skill three like is like a sweet spot statistically. A sprinkling of twos, maybe some fours if you need to balance the points out, and you have like a like a commando, no long range, stuff them in a four, it's fine. You can make up right. that gun and moving shirt. Right. I think. We played lists with all twos, and Kevin, especially in that Ghost Bear one, played with ones, which are Ooh. astronomically expensive. Yeah. So yeah, it's percentage based, right? And, right. It yeah. is. And so brutal. Um, you know, when talking about playing with less units that potentially are a little bit more fragile, but again, you have so many eggs in one basket, point wise. I think that is a big deal. So the next time we play, I play, I'm, I'm Clan Wolf. You're near Con Guard. Assuming that's our next game. I mean, I'm taking mostly threes. Yeah. You know. You're breaking the rules? I'm doing it, because otherwise... Did I you think, do that when you played Kevin as clan? I didn't. Okay, you stuck with it. I played all twos. Won. I did. I did. It was a close one, um, but yeah, I, I played all twos, and I you know, I broke sort of the, the our other tradition, which was like, well, five on eight, right? That was where we started, was like five on eight, right? Yeah. You did five on eight, you had two elementals, so you had, it was seven on eight, but like, let's face it, elementals and versus and mech, it's like not really... Yeah. Can't do it. It feels um, too much like infantry to me. It's weird. Like they're, I know they're, they're not, but like you yeah. look, at them, I'm like, man, these. This is just like an infantry platoon, and yeah. all I think about is stomping on them. Well, infantry actually have more pips, you know, for less points. Interesting. They can't do the anti mech attack. Well, they can, but they they say it's plus three instead of plus one. Yeah, it's probably hard for them. It's to harder. Move yeah. To, they're um, or they don't. Yeah, they can't jump and like. Well, they can't jump at the the same distance and stuff. There are jump platoons, but um, I don't know. Anyway. I think the skill's a big deal. I think um, with a higher BV, elementals could be worked in. Because you could have like a dedicated little group for elementals that wouldn't take away too much. Exactly. Right. Like a mission force. Yeah. 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 Ooh, I, I, we could, we could do, I we could do like a 600 pointer, you know? Yeah. And then you could have like a unit, and when you're talking about having elementals, just basically like a, a, you know, a tram car or, or, or like a short bus driver taking them around, dropping them off. You know, <laughs> oh, I mean, it's your yeah. stop. And yeah, they just jump off and they do whatever the heck. Or rip something do. apart. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Come back and um, get them at the end of the day. Yeah, that's that's too funny. <laughs> so the yeah, I mean the elementals are tough for me. Yeah. I was tried to paint them the other night and I stopped um, because I was like I'm never going to use these, but I need to finish my my two bases. I think you'll love them, man. I, I you especially. I'm surprised you haven't like. Again, coming from 40k, like they're figured some way. Yeah. I mean, you love mixed arms. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, we talked about it in the end of our bat re mm -hmm. bat battle report, bat rep. And um, I mean, I think having the vision of either, either building them into your list and not just taking them because you need to take them, yeah. or not taking them because you're not you don't want to, I think is the way to go. I think you need to build a force for using elementals because otherwise they're just a point suck. Yeah. Nothing. All right. So anyway, back to back to the math, right? Yeah, math. We have okay. Gone so number one, TMM three expensive max. Okay. Yeah. Number two, skill threes versus twos, and then you know I want to touch on a couple of things. There's some very vigorous conversation uh, with a few different people about board size, the two to, two to one ratio versus one to one ratio, our range modifiers, etc. So let's touch on that real quick. Do I get a veto in this conversation where you're just like, I don't want to talk about it? You do not. Oh, damn. Okay, uh, let's so, talk about so it. So, one. So, the 48 by 48 for Alpha Strike. Yeah. In a one-to-one. -one, it's the same as playing on an 8 foot by 8 foot table. Right. Which That's is the whole point. Which is not feasible. Is. Right? You, yeah. can't, you can't reach over. I mean, I guess if I had one of those things. But, like, it's just not feasible. Right? So, we like going to the one-to-one -one because you can do more in the same size. The second thing was the, the long... Yeah. The, the long range mods. So that's an optional rule in the back of the commander's edition. So instead of zero, two, four, six for short, medium, long, extreme yeah. uh, modifier, it's one, two, three, four. So like, short goes it's up. It's called sharpshooter or something? It's called, long, it's called long, long range, range target. Long yeah, range which is incidentally, there is a I'm SPA called sharpshooter that does, I think, or sniper, they do this, does the same thing. Ha! I knew it. 
Um, but this is a broad application of basically everything except for infantry. Yeah. I, and I think maybe aerospace too. I gotta, I gotta check on that. But anyway, for intents and purposes, let's talk about mechs. So it makes it harder to shoot at short range, easier to shoot at long and extreme. Absolutely. All right. Um, I, I am on board with this. On board so with that. So, so I think, you know, a couple people pointed out, well, that, you know, slants the bias of the game towards long range combat. Disagree. Yeah. Tell me. I, when you said he, he gave me this whole thing earlier, and I was like, I don't, I don't buy it. What I think it did is it balanced the game back to a parody at like medium range. Yeah. It was way biased towards like face to face, mech on mech, like makeout sessions. <laughs> and and I think that Gross. I mean, so all I did, you know, so it's funny you say like, oh, now it's biased that way. I just think it pulled it back to like more of a center point. Yeah. Uh, rather than a across the line in the opposite direction. Yeah, and the other thing you could I, argue adding like extreme range pulls it even further that way. I think yeah. I think ex, I think adding extreme does pull it back a little bit further. Okay. Um, however, um, I I like that personally. Yeah. Um, it was just like again we talk about clans, we talk about all this stuff. I mean, having a plus six mod, even a plus four. I mean, let's just talk four. about I mean, plus four at long range. You, we know the probabilities on here. You're, you're at you're at just with a gunnery of three. And your long range mod, forget everything else. Yeah. You're at a fifty percent chance to hit, give or take. You know, yeah. it's like fifty two percent chance to hit. Yeah, and when you're talking about having ammo, you you know, all these different things you still have to move. Yeah, yeah you're t yeah, you moved yeah. Well, right, it's so just, if they have a TMM of two, now you're at a nine to hit. At just at long range, you know, no terrain. Right. And you walked. And that's just long range, right? Yeah. Well it was so I'm talking Alpha Strike. Classic, right. Forget classic. Oh, okay. Minute. Yeah, sorry. So that's classic. Right, and, but and and similarly in classic, yeah. right? We play with similar mods in classic. Yeah, I mean the whole reason we started incorporating these rules is, you know, the games just were ending up face to face because the mods were too tall. The games are just, I, I and again, right. I, I know some people really do enjoy the simulation of like kind of sitting back and like throwing pips and not making a lot of progress in time. But like we were always time crunched. Yeah, like we have families and this other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> not not that you guys don't. I mean, don't take it that way. I have a family. <laughs> yeah, I have a family, guys. No, but I just mean like we're, you know, we're rushing around trying to do stuff. And so like we wanted to, we were like, how do we fit a game in to like a more condensed format? And I was like, okay, well, these are ways that we can balance yeah. that where you can maybe actually do damage at long range. And you can, when we started playing missions rather than just um, like uh, death matches mm -hmm. or whatever it's called, you know. Then you you sometimes need, uh, you really want to be able to have that tactical ability at long range, yeah, um, because it forces opponents to make decisions and things like that. So, I, I guess where I'm going with it is I think it really does improve the game. It, I hundred percent agree that it does shift it over, and I think you can make the argument that adding an extreme range puts it a little bit more biased towards that. But again, there's still infinitely more uh, lethal at closer ranges just because of how the game is structured. They almost all do more damage at short and medium. Your mods and are And your mods are lower. Yeah. yeah. And so it's just built into the game that you're going, that short and medium is going to be prioritized yes. and more deadly. Yeah, it is. It just gives you a chance to actually do something at long range. And it differentiates Which the Which opens up the game. It differentiates right. when the you have a When you're paying, I'm sorry to keep no, no. I just get very passionate about this, you know, when you buy a mech and, the, and you're paying for that extreme range ability and then you have to get 10s, 11s, 12s to hit on it, what are you paying for that for? Yeah. Get yeah. rid of that, you take a mech with be much better short and medium and, and then just sprint it in. Yeah. I, I mean, I agree. I made this comment Because you can play well. the game that way. You, you can, I mean, you can very the effectively. I mean, if you're, right, so, so the way... PV is structured. And I have a comment about that at the end. Please talk. So for PV, you know, essentially... There's, you know, there's a formula, right, to figure out what PV is. The way damage is factored into that is it's basically the ratio of short to medium to long is 1 to 2 to 1, right? So okay. medium range is weighted twice as much as short and long, but you're paying as much for short as you are for long range. But by the raw mods, you know, your short mod is plus zero, which is effectively a guaranteed hit, even if you're like a moron. Um, long cross. range, on the <laughs> other hand, is, is very challenging at plus four. Um, you're going to be missing more often, you know, than not, like, yeah. period. I mean, in fact, they're extreme range out because that's an optional rule, too. So either way, the meat of the game is at medium range. That's the one that's valued the highest in the PV formula. In the long-range targeting rules versus the raw modifiers, it's the same number, plus two to hit. Yeah. Right? So I feel like that's important.
as well, um, you know, when you're thinking about what rules do I want to play with. And to your point, like, you do pay a lot of points for those clan mechs that can do a lot of damage at long range, and even with low skill, you know, you're going to tell me, like, you're still a, you know, 40% chance to hit, or, or miss, rather, you know, at long range, like, that's awful. Like, no yeah. one would spend, you know, tens of billions of dollars on a, on a war machine if you weren't hitting... <laughs> right. You know, uh, in my opinion. So, I don't know. To me... It's more realistic. It's more realistic. You know, I mean, I, I played MechWarrior for years. For years. You don't win games at close range unless you're in a city. You win games by sniping dudes, by hitting and fading, by destroying them off the ridge lines. You know, you're hitting from a thousand you, meters. You love the ridge meters. lines. I still remember your... Your little tactic, up and back, up and back, oh, pop, 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 pop. Yeah, you went, and, then you, and then you'd blow somebody up and you'd disappear into the fog and you'd come around, you know, and that was the thing. You'd use your sensors, you'd use range. Like, that's the way you imagine these these war machines operating. Right, Otherwise, they're so expensive and irreplaceable. And, so, and even still, like, and that I think just it opens up in mission it. play. Like, imagine trying to hold an objective down if you can't hit anything from, you know, 21 inches away. Right. Yeah, and anyway. you're basically, yeah, you're sitting let's there. Let's talk about, let's talk about the plants. Let's talk about, let's talk about Tuckia. Two kid, what a, two kid. What about, about what about two kid? So You're first things first. I'm very excited. I'm excited. Um, actually, they have random tables. I was um, very on board. Very critical of this book. I, I went through it very critically. Um, and I was very much impressed. Um, I, I think this is um, one of the best supplements they've put out. I'm not just saying that because they gave me a preview. I'm genuinely saying that I think it is one of the most well thought out supplements. It supports both Alpha Strike and Classic. Um, it's got Flavor for everybody. Yeah. Um, a lot of clans. A lot. Of, yeah. It's you really know good. the the right, oh, the fluff. I I was I was thinking from oh. a rules perspective, but yeah, the fluff is incredible too. Um, the artwork's really good. Um, there's some really cool different styles in there. Yeah. Um, that that I really liked. So the com the comp guard illustrations are great. So why don't we why don't we talk about the PDF? So the first thing is it talks about how to play a campaign, All right? And so our own campaign system was derived from the chaos campaign which this is based on. Um, but there are some improvements in this system that I, that I really like. So they took, they took their chaos campaign and they evolved it a little bit. Um, so the first thing they did here was um, they added in a force building component. Okay. okay. So basically what you do is, you know, we decide ahead of time, like how big, do, how big of a game we want to play. Star, binary, trinary. Clan guy gets to pick, right? So... I say, ah, let's play Star. We'll do some quick games, right? So there's a table. I look up Star, and it tells me I get 200 force points. Okay? Seems low. Seems low. I want more. No, I'm kidding. Force points are, or, yeah, I think it's force points. Uh, force points are force, force value, one of the two. Um, they allow you to purchase mechs uh, of varying sizes and piloting skills. So the clans have access to... Skill one, two, and three. Com guard is two, three, and four. And then you know you've got your light, medium, heavy, assault max. Clans have front line and second line elementals, right? Um, and then with support points, you can buy like little vehicles and things like that. If you're com guard, you can buy like they're not like full vehicles that have a full record sheet. They're like they're almost like little minions, and they drive around and they you know they they have like a fixed to hit number and they have a fixed amount of like. If you roll this, they die, you know. So you don't have to track anything. They're very easy. They are very much like a minion. Yeah, they're like, like D&D. Yes, yeah. like in D&D, exactly. Yes, yeah, not like a bit of, like, you know, grooming. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know? no. I, I, I was like D&D. Um, so it's really cool, you know. Shout you out to all those game masters out there. Masters. <laughs> Shout out to the game masters. <laughs> gotcha. Um, so, so that's all, you know, that's all in there. Now, we built forces. Um, I was going to say, it's yeah, similar but not the same. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, to, what we did was we said 150 force points, basically, because we, we, we weren't going to do the full 200. Um, and, you know, each one of these mechs, so if I want a heavy and he's an elite pilot, you know, there's a certain cost for that. It's yep. like 20 points or whatever the heck it is. You know, it's different for Clan and, and Comstar. So I get like that slot. I get that, you know, and I basically fill up my 150 or 200 or whatever you're playing with those undisclosed max you know just yeah. like a it's like a class and a pilot right right and then uh you roll on a table um well actually what you do Which i'm sorry i'm missing part. a step you assign them to a formation if you want 
Okay. So in Alpha Strike, right, you've got this notion of formations of Battle Star, Fire Star, you know, Command Star, whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, you can take Heavy your mechs and you can put them into a formation, right? And then based on the formation you roll on a table, you know, and there's a few different tables based on the class of the mech, the formation, and you get a mech. You know, presto, presto. That's where the baby you comes have, from. You have your force. Now, what that Stork leads to, it. what's it lead to, is potential of like wildly imbalanced forces, right? That's uh, interesting. Yeah. Like, I didn't you think about roll it from that aspect. Some really good BV max or PV max, and I could roll some really bad ones, or vice versa. But I think at the end of the day, it's probably going to wash out. Um, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I but think I, love I think it makes rolling it fun. On tables. Yeah, that's like, absolutely. My favorite part of gaming is rolling on random tables. Mm. Random generator. Uh, anything. Generation anything. tables. That's why you play demons in 40k. Oh uh, yeah. So. Oh my god! I forgot about that. I mean, it was all we would just sit there and watch you roll randomly. You're like, oh. Oh, I, I just I, killed I your, yeah. your boss. Yeah. Well, first you'd roll on a random table that would tell you to roll on a different random table. Yeah. And then. It's then also what I loved about like winning battles in Dungeons and Dragons was. The, like all the loot we would get when we would roll in like the the, the loot tables the, yeah the tables within so tables good. like oh you rolled like an elemental thing okay so, what so you uh, I built of course in Excel I built a builder yeah where you can just select from the drop down and it like tallies up your force points um, I would expect no less and you know it tells you skills and all this other thing so um, you know essentially what you've got when we did the 150 I ended up with uh, 10 clan mechs you have I believe, 16 mechs. Yeah. So it's a substantially large number. Now, ComGuard operates in, like, the level 2s, which is 6 mechs, right? Whereas a Lance is 4, Star's 5, ComGuard's got to do it differently. They got 6. Yeah. So you could theoretically do, like, two formations of 6 mechs, right? And then, then they've got the leftovers. Whatever you roll for those formations, it doesn't have to conform to the actual <laughs> formation rules. So you could get really lucky. And roll mechs that could, like, never be in a formation together, you know, because they don't meet the right requirements, and, you know... And you boom, get the special rules. You get the special rules, which is pretty good. Um, like, you know, in, I think it's Direct Fire Lance has a really good one. If you miss by one at long range, you know, you, you know, it's a, it does half damage, or I don't remember exactly. Th but there's, a, like, the Battle Lance. Yes, yeah, I was actually uh, speaking with, uh, with one of the guys that was working on it um, over there, and uh, it is confirmed. So, and it does say it explicitly in the rules, but I just wanted to make sure I was reading it right because it, it seems pretty powerful. Um, yeah, but, but I think you would pick the one with the best rules, and then but you don't know what you're going to get on the table. Mm. That's the thing. Yeah. So you could get garbage. You don't know. You don't know. Now, if you're not rolling randomly, obviously you need to. If you decide like, oh, we're going to pick in advance, you know, because you can balance it by BB or PB, just like we would normally do in one of our campaigns. So I like this. It's I know. cool. It's a new flavor. I like I like trying on new things. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't? Yeah, who doesn't? So, kind of moving on uh, after you get through the force building, um, and you know, why don't I flash up here? If I if I remember, I'll flash up one of the random tables um, just to kind of show. But you know, you can see it's got all the different heavy mechs. Um, that's on that's on page thirty three, at least of my PDF. And you know, like we don't have all the mechs yet. Uh, like the clan mechs with the wave two ones, like I don't have all the clan mechs. So when I roll best approximation, you know, or I'll re-roll the ones I don't have. Um, but there is a, there's a ton on here. So very cool. Um, and then, you know, what happens is just like in, in, um, the DFA campaign system and the original chaos campaign system, there's the notion of tracks, right? Right. Um, what's, what's different about theirs is, you know, basically a track and a mission are kind of a synonymous thing. You know, so you play a mission, you know, and that's that. So what's really cool about this and what I really like is every clan at the, in the back of the book um, has its own campaign map, depending on where they landed, right, and where they're going to go. Um, and so the, the sort of the narrative is fixed. It's fixed, right? Like so, it. you know... You're playing the story. Right, like uh, for, right. for Smoke Jaguar... Um, is it Jaguar? J Jaguar. Jaguar. Um, you know, they have a couple different deployment zones and the Dinju Mountains and the Racis Delta, you know, and then they move into the, you know, the Tamo Mountains. It's very cool, like, you know, right out of the sort of the lore. Um, and there's some great artwork of the maps and things like that. It gives yeah, you an idea I, 
of how you might want to set up your board. In fact, the missions have some recommendations on that as well. And they had two kid maps, right? Didn't they they do, yeah. And it'll tell you in the mission, like, you should use this particular cool. map if, if you want to do that. You can. It tells you what forces are involved, like what, you know, which Jaguar forces, which Congard forces. And again, this is for every clan, you know, Diamond Shark, Wolf, J you know, all of them. All those crazy cats. Um, and what's cool is every clan, so there's a set of, like, base missions, you know, Assault, you know, Pursuit, Outflank, whatever they are. Uh, and then every clan has its own missions as well, right? So Smoke Jaguar has one called, um, you know, Soft Landing. And, uh, classic Smoke Jaguar. Classic Smoke Jaguar. Um, you know, they have a different set of objectives and different special rules. And, you know, the attacker and, and defender deploy different amounts and so on and so forth. So very cool. Every mission um, has its own flavor. And then every clan has its sort of unique missions that, that, that fit the narrative and the flavor as well. So I thought that was really cool. You know, definitely going to mine that for some ideas. Okay. Um, the other thing here uh, that is super cool about this particular PDF is... After you get past all of the, the missions uh, and all of the different clan landing zones, there is a technical readout at the end. From what I could tell, the majority of these mechs were, uh, were new. There, there are some that are sort of reprints, like there's the Black Knight 9, um, which, you know, I believe it's the Clan Buster Black Knight. That's in there. Uh, but that's in like other, you know, other uh, technical readouts as well. But there's like, for example, Shadow Cat TC. Yeah, actually, hold on. Just so like, uh, you know, not everybody knows what the technical readout is, right? So, so what is the technical readout? Well, so the technical readouts um, like are essentially, readout. yeah, they're supplement books. You know, they're they're about yay thick. You know, um, great. They got artwork for all the mechs. Uh, they're they've been reprinting new ones. So they have you know the Succession Wars. They have a Clan Invasion one. They have a Golden yeah. Century one, I believe. Um, and they basically she had one, yeah. And, and they they release new variants of mechs and stuff. Exactly right. right. Yeah. And canon you know, characters sometimes, right? Yeah. There, there's mentions of like who would pilot these mechs. There's a background of like this was built in defiance, and you know whatever. Yeah. Like, okay. So you've got all this, and then you've got the classic battle tech stats. You yeah. know, um, essentially like the loadout for the mech. You know, movement, what weapons, where they're located. It doesn't it's not the full record sheet, but yeah. um, so. This has like a mini technical readout in the back, same thing. And you you're know. saying, and just to be clear too, you're saying that these ones are new variants? Like new variants. Fully new, not brand like, new. Okay. Not, a, not that's from old books or anything. I, I mean, I have never seen some of these variants before. Yeah. I actually referenced them in some of the are they in, uh, materials um, that I have. Uh, they're not in, I didn't see them in Mega Mac or any of the other the, builders. The builders. Yeah, they're, I didn't see them in any of those. Yeah. Um, and so I well. looked on Master Unit List, and it, and it says that the source is, in fact, the you know the Tucky book. So there you go. Very so, cool. I, yeah, exciting, I thought right? that was I mean, really cool. New uh, variants is cool. I wish I would have looked through the end of this book. Because I, I was dying for um, inspiration. For you know what else is in here, guys? Show me. Look at this camo specs for all the different uh, factions. Yeah, let's add in the thing that camo first army, second. Yep. Oh, I was just gonna say, you know, camo specs released their new website. Oh, yeah. Majorly improved. It's awesome. amazing. They did a great job. Awesome. If you've not been using camo specs because of the performance issues, um, time go to back to yeah. it. Yeah, it's, time it's, to check it out. It's great. They're very much trying. and There's like a way to submit your own mechs to it, too. So if you're like a good painter, yeah, um, or maybe if you're not, I mean, I would probably say you want to be a good painter. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, okay, so... Sorry for that. But. Yes, so there are, speaking of camo specs, there are camo specs for all of the, the clans, like all the Jade Falcon units. What, you know, what you can brigades see. are there? Because I don't remember who's involved in this. It's the ones you love, the Delta. I see Delta. The That's Peregrine the, Galaxy. Peregrine, they're weird, right? Are they red and white or yeah, they they're red and white. or something? Yeah, they're, they're funky. The, just the, the Jade Falcon Galaxy. They were yeah. very uncreative in their naming. Yeah. Yeah, and that's like the g generic. The one thing I didn't know either with Comstar, too, is that, like, and I think it was from the Tukiid book, uh, is that they, they're not all white. They do use just, like, straight-up camo. Yeah, for like, sometimes they do. Th this is only for their, like, their parade colors or whatever. Really? Okay. Yeah, those, I didn't realize well, that. I mean, I, most of the, the, like, the artwork on the, the cover of this book, which is, white. by the way, yeah. phenomenal. Right, they're always white. So, I mean, I think you could probably get By the way, away. I need to get a saber onto my, is it a commando? It's a black knight. Oh, yeah. it's a black knight. Yes. Oh, he's not released yet. Does he have a sword? No, nah, but we'll, you know, we've, he's getting we've got enough bits. What do you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carve it off of one of your... Um... Please don't. <laughs> Actually, it would, I see a blade that looks exactly like it. On yeah. your, um, who's your chaplain, maybe? Something like that. Oh, that's going to be so good. You're going to come back. Care. This is missing. 
<laughs> it's like a piece of putty, you know? Like green, just like just play doh. Yeah, you would just, just do play doh. Just do play doh. I don't know how to use green stuff. Um, all right, so let's talk about your guys. So let's talk about. Um, well, let me wrap up on this before. Yeah, we yeah. Get so so a great, great supplement. I'm excited. The lore is phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, the the way they in sort of wove woven weaved the narrative into the missions and into like here's the drop zone here's the map like if you win this one you advance if you lose this one like you know Comstar pushes you back like you get to decide it's almost like the old i think you bring up warhammer but remember yeah. the planetary campaign where you yeah. could like move your dudes around i was just telling like, somebody about that yeah you know there is like actual you know where Wait, do i think I it's called and... is it wove or weaved Woven. I don't Woven. Know. I don't know. But, yes. yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, the one thing I love about campaigns that I think is, like, a critical part of them is that track system. And I, I, I never called it track before. But, like, you want the battles to mean something and to either open up opportunities or push you back. Like, you right. don't want to just be able to play it and be like, oh, okay, well, I'll just keep, you know, keep on Throwing invading. At it. Like, right. sorry, can't do that, buddy. Like, you lose this. You're on the back foot. You either have to you flee or you have to do this. That's always been a great narrative part of the game. I agree. Gives you a reason to do well. When you don't, it still gives you an opportunity. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's really fun. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to, to working that back in. Um, yeah. I agree. Love it. How, how many pages is it, by the way? Because it feels like so it's going to be like 200 hard pages. Back. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, I mean, the PDF is 202 pages. So I assume with the cover, the front of the cover, I'm going to say it's 200 pages, right? You know? Well, front and back, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so like, a, yes. But 100, 100. pages, that's a yeah. big old book. This is yeah, good. That's I'm big. Excited. Yeah, I'm excited about it, too. Um, I'm gonna, yeah, I got it on order, so um, hopefully, um, you know, hopefully I get that soon. Probably Ray, get it. Christmas. You care. Yeah. Get, go down to the shipping center. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what my book? Rent a U-Haul. Drive it up here. <laughs> Play a few games. Yeah, yeah. Um, play a few games. Go back. So, so yeah, guys. If you if you haven't ordered this already, or you don't have the PDF, um, I'd highly recommend it. It is. It's one. I mean, I want the, the hardback because these are the things I love to have on the shelf. It's just like that thing of inspiration when you either want to run, you know, a Destiny game, right, an RPG game, and oh, you're yeah. like, oh, you know, what, where can I draw from? Right. Or, you know, again, like when we when we build our rules or our missions, or our campaigns, these are the kinds of things I look at, right? And I'm like, yeah, what's what we good? Like? What can we yeah. improve on, right? Um, so I think it's really What's good that way. Twist? All the artwork's awesome. Um, the fact that it's got the color schemes is awesome. Yeah. Just, I mean, everything about this book, there, there's, there's nothing in here that really jumped out at me where I was like, I hate it. Um, I, everything in here I thought was really good. Yeah. You know, the way they took vehicles and, 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 and to be clear, it's for classic, right? You can incorporate these vehicles as support points. Right, which was like one of our big gripes, right? It's yeah. like there. W I mean, and I know people disagree. That's fine. I think combined arms is is it's a tax in classic. It's very cumbersome to do. Very cumbersome. This, yeah. you know, you can do vehicles, you do infantry, you do all these things, just like you can do aerospace in the BattleTech manual as support points, right? Right, and it's now you simplified. Yeah. yeah, it's super simple, um, and it's cool because you got the little things like buzzing around the board, and and they just add that extra feel to the to the game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely highly recommend uh, this book. Looking forward to playing the yeah. game. I'm yeah. curious if people are planning is to get it themselves. I'm very, you know, in the comments, let us know what your plans are with it and yeah. if you're excited about it or if you're not. Like, I don't know. It seems pretty awesome to me. But yeah, agreed. Who knows? Agreed. Yeah, I'm looking forward to, to playing uh, a game. I've been cooped up it. in my house. Not haven't seen a real person in so long. <laughs> I haven't seen a person. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God we can game. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about Comstar. Let's do it. Yeah. So, I've been painting Comstar. I have all of the Wave 1 Clan Inner Sphere mechs and all of the a Game of Armor Combat and Beginner Box Inner Sphere mechs all painted as Comguard. So, where am I at with it and why are we talking about it? Yeah. Well, first off, they should have already been done, for one thing, and they're not. And uh, there's a good reason for that, because uh, I'm... I'm bad at doing things. I'm a procrastinator. That's and not. That's, that's a big problem. Some watcher. Yeah, yeah. It's it's very true. We all know it. Um, but yeah, no. So I've been making progress, and what I, Aaron took some pictures, and he's gonna probably put them up. So I have three mechs done right now, and I wanted to just talk about the process of painting white mechs, things that I've been thinking about, and techniques I'm using, and sort of feedback on it. I'm very curious what people are thinking. Um, so this is how I started, right? So. I airbrush 
and I did the Zenithal basing on them, right? So you paint them all black, you do like a half of gray, and then you do like a top down of white, and it simulates shadows on, on a smaller object, right? So if you turn the mech upside down, it kind of looks black underneath, right? Before you paint it. I see that. So yeah, so I did that on all of my whites, and then I was like, how do I get them to be more white? They, they kind of end up a little bit grayish, and there's a lot of dark spots. So I was like, okay. So, so I posted up on the Facebook group, the Battletech Customization and Painting. Uh, shout out to you guys. You're great. Uh, and Matthew Birdsall, who is an amazing painter yes. that I follow there, and like we've watched him on Twitch and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah we've he, had him on the channel. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and you, you did HBO with him, right? Yeah, yeah. awesome, so, awesome painter. Yeah. So actually, if I can interject, sure. he painted up two lances for us. Uh, that are going to be um, the prizes and veteran challenges on Patreon, Tom. Ooh. So we got we got a couple veteran challenges lined up. Can uh, I can I create up. a fake account to win them? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Though we painted yeah. up. He did our Turin guard and oh, he fun. did our Ryukin, the Draconis combine. And I mean, they're phenomenal. Yeah, they're phenomenal. Really sick. Uh, so anyway, guys. Well, yeah. So so he was like, hey, when I do white, you know, I do a dry brush of white after. Uh, so I, I wash, I heavy wash them with like a known oil or, you know, which is just like a black yeah. wash. And uh, and then I dry brush the white in thin layers over and over until I get to that white level that I want to see. So I was like, OK, I'm going to try that. I'm not the best painter. So I did the, the heavy wash and that took a lot of time. And it definitely, like, this guy is an example of that mech at that next stage. Yeah. So it goes from this, which, again, it's hard on the camera to see, but basically... I'll, I'll flash up some close-ups yeah. of the, the So, like, stage yeah. one, yeah. Uh, and then a stage two. And so bringing back such a dark mech to a, a white again, I was very um, worried about it. Yeah. And so, and it took me a really long time. I want to say, like, one mech took me 30 minutes Oof. at least to paint to yeah. the sk to the level that you gotta you wait for it to dry you gotta wait you for it to dry you can't just smear on more no paint. no that was like active painting time it actually took two days oh wow um in and, total and i can see dry. even though you washed it and i didn't notice it until you said it you know you can see that it's different shades of gray. you still see it yeah you know, there's the black that that zenithal or whatever it's called that yeah. effect and that's what uh, I was worried very... about losing by. Mm -hmm. So okay, yeah. So so to, to to speed it up, basically. So from that point, I was like, I need to bring the white back out, but I don't want to cover up the zenithal mm -hmm. and lose all of that shading that I spent time doing, right? And so I was like, how do I do that? And Matt was like, hey, you know, try dry brushing. So the first mech I did that on, which was the archer. The archer was the first mech that I brought to the final stage of it. Looks great. Um, yeah, and so you know, I dry brushed and dry brushed and. It looked too weathered for me. I didn't. I don't have the technique down to make the dry brushing not be really streaky. Um, and like Aaron, when I sent him the picture, he's like, "Oh, it looks really cool in battle worn." I was like, "That was not what I was going for." I love it whatsoever. That's why I was just smirking. Yeah. I love the weathered look. You know, the yeah. chipping and all that stuff. Like, and I know it wasn't the intended effect, yeah. but you know, that I, ended, I actually ended up winning, going through and panel highlighting a lot of stuff. So like that was all repainted mostly. And these are army painter. Army uh, painter, airbrush paints. Yeah, or all, you know, just the just army paints, painter man. war yeah. paints, yeah. They look I mean, um, the white just came out. Yeah, and so, so this good. was one I did where it was zenithal, and then it was dark washed, and then it was dry brushed, and then I ended up panel washing it. So that's the archer. Mm -hmm. And then what I was going to say is the accents I used, it was white, and then I did the hands and any um, SRM or LRM stuff in a, in a bright silver. Yeah. And I did joints in a dark gray. Okay. And then I did their little antenna in silver and yellow tip because I, like I thought yellow, that looked I think, cool. I think it pops a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it gives a little bit of stuff. And then their canopies were in the green. So if I can talk about our buddy Matt for sure. a minute. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, something I think our, our miniatures are lacking uh, is decals. I was, I was oh, on his there. Twitch uh, watching him. Uh, I was coding Battleetics and I had him, I yeah, had him fighting up on the Parana, side. Right. Fighting Piranha Graphics he uses, uh, and... They're not a sponsor. It just is incredible. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit. I want to get the numbers, because Comstar right? like, always has their numbers and stuff. So he was doing the numbers, he had some caution stripes, he had some of the, you know, the checkered patterns, he was doing some ghost bear. It was yeah. just, it was amazing. I was uh, thinking about... The way it brings out detail on the yeah. It makes them look so real, you know? And, and that's all. After, again, looking at the Tukiid artwork... They have the numbers, they have a little bit of a uh, checker pattern, yeah. and I wanted to do checker pattern on these guys, but I got, it, it's a lot of work to freehand that stuff, 
and I've been meaning to order some the, decals. The templates. Yeah, template. yeah, yeah. yeah, they have templates. Yeah. Well, we'll we so. should go in on a giant order uh, because I'm ready. I mean, I have so many mechs painted. Yeah. Um, and at this point, I just give you those little. Yeah, it's right. You just get on. You know, you you pull out all my my avatar knights or Etrian knights, and you know, boom, just start adding some caution stripes, some numbers. Like, it just it's just the level. next level of yeah. of cool. You know. So, um, but speaking of cool, yeah. So let's let's finish up this discussion so we can move on to the, the next cool thing, which is buying things. Yeah, buying things. So again, so that's the archer, right? So the archer went through the most intensive process. So now I was like, this is a lot of work. What if I don't? What happens if I don't dark wash them and just try to panel highlight the kind of gray look of the stage one guys? Yeah. And that I did on the Marauder. So when you put them next to each other, you can tell the Marauder doesn't quite have the dark, dark sections that the Archer does. Yeah, I guess I can see it. But still looks very white and still has definition in the panels, right? Some places, like maybe on these, uh, on the pods, the jump jets, I don't even know what they are. Yeah. Engines. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Heat sinks. Yeah, it could use a little bit more. But for the most part, it works, especially on the legs where the, where the Zenithal was much more noticeable. Yeah. It really... You know, gives it that look. Yeah, you know, um, and I'm torn between the two. I'll be honest with you. Um, well, there's a third. Okay. So there's one more. So then the Warhammer, right? The Warhammer, I did the dark wash on, but then I didn't dry brush it. I just panel painted it. Okay. Um, because I was like, you know, the dry brushing seemed like maybe a step that wasn't good enough for what I wanted out of it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what happens if I panel paint it? So this is, this is dark washed and panel highlighted without the step of dry brushing. And I think it turned out pretty good. Again, you sort of see the difference. It's maybe a little bit grayer. Yeah, um, I can see the difference now that you kind of talked through it. Yeah. I still like the Archer the best. Yeah, and, and so, okay. Well, you know. I'm gonna add 40 minutes times that many mechs to your, yeah. to your paint time. But I do, yeah, and then all I'll the- I'll be honest though, this guy looks great too. Yeah. And and one and of the things great too. They all look great. Yeah. I don't know. What it's, do you guys think? Yeah, yeah. Let me know. Because what it takes too is like on all the silver. After you dark wash it, I have to go back through and um, usually on the tops I repaint the top with silver. Yeah. So that you get like the dark underside and it kind of gives it a lot more um, character. Mm. Um, same on all the the antenna. I still have to fix up the yellow. Yeah. But um, yeah. No. I mean, I I, I actually do kind of agree. I think out of all of them. I like the Archer and I like the, the Warhammer the best. I'm glad you, you liked them. I was pretty psyched to show you the, the progress on them. And yeah. yeah, I'm curious, you know, do you guys see a difference on the pictures? Again, because in person, I, and I hate, taking pictures of mechs is hard, it's man. so hard. Every weird little, like, stripey line, just, it, like, I don't know what it is about, like, yeah. phone cameras or something. Yeah, yeah you can't really see it as much in person. No. Um, I mean, but, even you, know, when you, you can see the tone in. of, like, the tone of the white's different. Yeah, you know, very slightly, but, but I, mean, like, I think all the, the brush strokes you really don't notice as much, right? God no. I mean, unless you're putting it under a magnifying glass. Yeah. You know, which I got one. <laughs> got one. Not nice. Not nice as yours though. Mine. I was at Michael's buying gifts or something, and I they had one. I was like, yeah. I, I, I can't does use it, have, it. Does it have an LED ring on it? No, it has just one LED, which is okay. But I, dude, I cannot paint. I'm like, when, when the brush <laughs> comes in and it's like, like, a, like a cannon. You know, I, well, it's, it's yeah, it messes with my brain, man. I know, I can't do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah you have to have it at the right angle, or it's just a, a mess. I was like, oh, I can't do this. Yeah, but I bought a bunch of brushes, and I'm like super happy with them. I got trip quad zero brushes. Oh wow, and quad eighteen zero. zeros, which yeah. I think are the same. I uh, yeah, I don't know. I find they still don't seem small enough. And it was actually something Ryan from Camo Specs so in our interview. I'll, I I asked him, you know, what size brush to use, and he's like. It's not about the size of the brush. And I was like, oh, here we go. No. Uh, he said, he said, it's not, he said, you know, it's more about how much paint is on the brush and how fine of a tip you can get. And I, you know, and that was consistent with my experience. Uh, not that I'm like anywhere near this guy. This guy's like next level. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it's consistent because I typically use like twos and like zero to two. Like I don't even use my, the only time I use my 10 zero or my or zero 10 and zero three is when I'm doing cockpits. Yeah, that's like it. Otherwise, even for fine finer details, like I'll just put a little. As long as the brush has like a good tip on it, yeah. you get a little bit of paint on it, and you can get pretty much everything. Yeah, that that's how you use it. the brush that I mainly use on stuff is about 
that long, I think. It's a pretty oh, the long bristles. Yeah, yeah it's a okay. really long brush, but again, the whole brush is that but long. it gets to, <laughs> yeah, but it gets down to a really fine tip and it's and that's so when yeah. I'm doing cockpits and when I'm doing the ends of barrels or getting in places, I do that technique. I, I get a little glob of paint on the in the very tip of it. Yeah. And I just stab it and then I drag it or whatever. Yeah, perfect. You know. Yeah, they look great, man. I'm excited. I, I think they're gonna look great on the on the table. Uh, you know, we did like a green mat down, but like, I'm just thinking like, you know, the reds and the, you know, the, it's just yeah. like the, the, all the different maps will do, um, you know, and, and I think they're going to really pop and they're gonna look really good. So, um, so we're going to talk about wave two wave orders. Two. So, I mean, how much do we have coming? Like, oh my God, 20 boxes, dude, I ordered. And so we're, we're each getting one of basically everything. everything. I think there's. I think we're like two boxes short of getting one of everything. So like you're gonna get one box, I'm gonna get one box. This is gonna be the one. Then I went back and when you weren't looking, I bought one of every single of Inner Sphere Lance. Um, so I'm gonna be getting two. <laughs> wow. Of every Inner Sphere Lance uh, because right because you have nine thousand. I want to replace them. It's right. so hard. Yeah, we talked about that. You know, like. Yeah. And then you hear it's the jarring the, when you the put stuff them on that, the board. that Blaine, Lee Pardo, and Brett Evans are doing with the multi-part plastic kits, right? Yeah. Uh, really cool stuff. And so, you know, obviously there's a lot of great stuff from Ironwind that you can't get, you know, because they haven't made plastics for them. Yeah. Um, well, that's not even true. I mean... They not, did say they were going to do another Kickstarter, too. You know, oh, I really? Did, I did yeah. read that. Uh, I don't know well, if that's true. Yeah. I don't know if that's true. I was reading the internets, which is a thing I try not to do. Yeah. Uh, and it, you know, the, there was, uh, there was talk of, you know, I think the question was directly, actually, you know what it was? It was on the AMA thing oh, okay. uh, on YouTube, Catalyst AMA. Um, and somebody asked a question in chat, you know, are you doing another Kickstarter for all the mechs that like, you know, the things we love that you didn't put in this, this first Kickstarter and the answer was yes. Um, so yeah, I don't know, man. So yeah, yeah, let's add a final line item to this conversation too, about was, was Catalyst successful as a Kickstarter? And I um, want to say, I, have you ever done any other Kickstarters? I've done a, uh, a couple small ones. Okay. You know, but... Yeah. I've done some big and small ones. Yeah, I've, I mean, I think one one was for, like, a like a music artist, right? Another one was for... Wait, a Kickstarter for a music artist? Yeah, like that. Let know, me like, rephrase it then, for, like, a product. No. no. For, like, like a startup product. Nope. I've done nope. a bunch of them. Like, Not. for technology products, Not for game products... Um, for cooking products, I've done a bunch because I was really into it for a while because I thought it was cool. Yeah, um, it is kind of cool. You know? it, yeah, Kickstarter is cool, but I feel like a venture capitalist. Yeah, right. And Kiva loans and stuff. <laughs> I love that and stuff. But um, I think at the end of the day, so far, we'll see. You know, Wave Two is yet to be fulfilled, but like in terms of how Kickstarters go, this has been pretty great and I'm actually I don't want to say I'm surprised but I, I am kind of surprised like coming into this Kickstarter being a veteran of Kickstarters my expectation was double the amount of time that they say it's going to take Please. stuff is not going to be as good as they say it is yeah. or it's never going to come through at all and um, I think they really knocked it out of the park I mean ever since the the first phase they've been delivering and I, there's some people that have not been getting their stuff you know, but that's all, I think, at the fulfillment that's side. Like fringe, yeah, and that's like the fun, it's such fringe cases. Yeah. I mean, the last time I read was like 99 point like something percent yeah. fulfilled. It's which, some people were like, they, they, they elected certain ways to get their shipping stuff, and that was one, a large one product was yeah. not ready or something. Yeah, yeah, well, some people picked, you know, one shipment, and so that means everything's coming in wave two. Right, right, exactly. And, and they didn't and realize, I, think it was I didn't cheaper. even realize what that meant, to be honest. Luckily, Tom, you did it. Yeah, I know. That's, I was like, whew, thank God you did it, because I, I would have, probably been like, oh yeah, one shipment, I'm going to save the planet with this, yeah. you know, and then we would have not Don't save the this. planet, get Ugh. your max. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so I just wanted to say like, <laughs> you know, I'm pretty psyched and I would probably, and I would definitely support their next one, yeah. I think, because they, they've, they've proved that they're able to execute, and this was, I mean, this, I can't even imagine this was anywhere near what their projections were, like $2 million. I think they said it was five at the end of the day. Did five I hear million? that correctly? I mean, so, so the, the, uh, the, the scale that they had to reach to fulfill all this stuff was probably way beyond what they were expecting. Absolutely. Um, and they did it. So kudos yeah. to them. Kudos uh, to that team. I, I think they did a really good job. I don't, um, I don't like to um, talk good about people. I'm an Irish Catholic. 
It feels very <laughs> odd to me. I just, just want to talk me. nice about people. Yeah. I don't, yeah, know. I don't like anybody. Yeah. Um, See, like my mechs, I'm like, ah, oh, they're garbage. Let me tell you what I can't think. Can't do it. Yeah. They should do differently in the next Kickstarter. Ooh. Words of wisdom from Death From Above Media Group. We, we got a liability corp. We got to throw some bombs. If you're throwing bombs, put mail. Limit the scope. Like, oh, our money is here. We are ready. We are willing to give it to you. Limit the scope. I think they did too many add-ons in this first one. Like, you know, remember they kept adding unlock goals, right? That's true. I would just come out of the gate and be like, this is what we're going to do. Here are the stretch. I mean, it definitely worked. Um, but, you know, here are the stretch goals. Just put a neat ribbon on it and, you know, get it done and move to the next one. I mean, we'll keep. I'll keep funding kick. I'll fund Kickstarters all all day. That's interesting. Now um, that they've had a really big successful one, I wonder if they can be like more exclusive about it. Be like, this is it. Like, this is the last stretch goal. These, you know, we're super limited and yeah. do more of them. But I guess I Kickstarter mean, probably takes a portion of them. I don't know how. In yeah. terms of as, as a as a maker. Right. right. Uh, I mean, it's yeah. It's I, I, right, and that's another point. Is like, do you even need a Kickstarter? You know, or just like a one-year pre-order, you know? Yeah, is, is there debt funding that they can do, like, in the traditional debt markets <sighs> rather than doing Kickstarter? Right. right. They got $5 million capital right now. Real estate market's looking real good. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Interest rates are down, guys. Invest uh, now. Yeah, and I'm not saying that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so, so they might be able to, to avoid the costs and the complexities of a Kickstarter having use of a fulfillment vendor, even yeah. though I guess some of that like pledge master stuff is uh, that's probably nice helpful. to have. Yeah. Nice to have, yeah. you know, absolutely. And yeah, it's interesting. You know, you, you always think the same thing, like what portion does Kickstarter take, you know, yeah. and is it really necessary? Should do an interview with them and ask them. Yeah. Yeah. Kickstarter. I mean, I mean, you can probably find on their website. It's probably like 20%. Probably. Yeah. It's probably high. Right. Yeah, a I lot mean, of those platforms. I mean, Patreon pretty... takes like 8% or something like that. So is that sure, a, yeah. Yeah. I thought it was a lot more. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we wanted to upgrade to the, you know, to the highest tier, I think it's 12%, which is still yeah. pretty reasonable, right? But, you know, something like Kickstarter, I think you have a dedicated fan base, you know, I, I think that, you know, kind of self-funding or, you know, or self-promoting it and, you know, doing pre-orders and keeping it simple so that you can manage it without that, that yeah. added vendor, uh, I think you can maximize profits. I think you could deliver more faster. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I, I, I'm always just a guy who's like, how do you keep control? You know, because well, I mean, the scope. Yeah, something as big we as it was, that, right? like you yeah. couldn't, you couldn't. The, the Kickstarter, they just said, there's no way without CrowdOx and without Kickstarter, you know, you couldn't manage that to scale um, up that fast. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I guess you didn't. I, I guess. But they I think didn't if you higher... do box it and say like, this is what we're doing, right? And even to the point where it's like. You Maybe know, they can find the, a producer the, that can drop ship stuff. To, I don't know. No, I don't. I'm not doing their business. I don't know anything about their business. We know nothing about business. Yeah. No, I was just saying, like, you know, there also are producers who can drop ship for, you know. Yeah. So when that person clicks buy, boom. Yeah. They don't even have to keep product and all that stuff. Yeah. And pay for that up front, all that right. risk. That's good. Yeah. Total side, but yeah. So what? You, so what's the what's the verdict on wave two? How much more are you trying to buy? Because I don't know, man. I'm already. I'm trying to think. This is actually the last of the mechs I have to paint, except for the, the I have, legendary. I That's have it. about eight to ten more mechs. Oh, wait, I'm lying. I have like 13 more mechs. You got a whole bunch of clan mechs, don't you? Oh, well, well I got the. Falcon? Yeah, well, I got the second. I got the, the remnants from the other delivery. Oh, yes, our. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Our Santa special. Mm hmm. You know who you are. <laughs> I hear jingle uh, bells. Buy, you gotta put some buy, jingle bells in. Buy too. stuff. Uh, it's like crazy. And then, and then yeah, I don't know, but I mean, because wave two we're getting like seriously, how many boxes? It's eleven more or something eleven. unique. No, no, I mean like oh, individual. Yeah. Maybe you. I'm getting like twenty two, but I, I mean, okay. I mean, how many new lances are there? Yeah, that's probably the better way to say. It. You want lances me to or lance packs? I'll bring yeah. it up. Of yeah, course, I have, I have a spreadsheet for that. All right, so there are fifteen new. Got the Fire Star, the Heavy Battle Star, Support Star, Striker Star, Ad Hoc Star, Direct Fire Lance, Heavy Lance, Striker Lance, Fire Lance, Heavy Battle Lance, Urban Lance, Command Level 2, Battle Level 2. Oh, there's a Support Lance. And then they have Heavy Star down My here God. as well. So That's 60 mechs or something, probably? 65? Yes. So we wow. are getting one Heavy Battle Star, one Support Star, two of everything else, and then I got an additional of every single Lance but not the Comstar ones. 
Although I maybe maybe I want more king crabs, guys. The king crab's pretty good looking. <laughs> I have to say, I'm pretty into that. Oh my goodness, it's such a great match, Mr. Krabs. Yeah, you know I feel like I, I was I almost added more wave one stuff, but then I was like, you're gonna get 120 mechs or something to paint. I I couldn't I don't even yeah. That's too much. It's it's not actually now I'm saying it because as soon as I'm I'm gonna be driving home I'm gonna be like I kind of want 120 x because this is how I work. I am uh, as I, you know Kevin was surprised when I said this. I told him I'm cycling out the old stuff. I'm I mean, not, you have I'm to. not painting new factions. I mean I have so much invested in. It's tough because some of them are sentimental. Like some of these mechs I've had since I was like 15. Yeah, it's a long time ago, guys. A long time ago. Uh, and it doesn't you know, mean you gotta get rid of them. Well, no, I mean I just pack them away because. Yeah. They're just, like, you know, like, that original the Zeus. The scale is so off on them. I mean, Even the plastic so... Alpha Strike ones. Like, I had my, oh, uh, the, so the original too. Zeus that I had magnetized all up, and it was, like, so tiny. Like, the Archer is, like, gigantic next to it. It doesn't know? make sense. And so, And the scale know, makes sense. I can't wait for the new, the new Zeus, the new Victor, uh, the new Black Knight. Like, so many of these heavies. Is there a Cyclops coming? Yeah, dude. Oh, I can't wait. I it's love the so Cyclops good. next. So good. Even though the old one is a very classic. With the... I know the hat. It's so good. I'm I'm, I'm psyched for for these new mechs. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know, man. I, I'll think about it. I might add I might add a few more things. Maybe can, I, do that. can I throw a diversionary side quest into this? Do it. Um, what do you think the secondary market is going to look like for um, vintage mech models now? For a while, it was super hot. Do you remember that? <laughs> super hot. People were asking crazy money for the old Ralph Partha stuff and all this. And I wonder if that's falling out from the bottom of the market or not. I don't know. Because who question. wants them? I, I don't know. Maybe people want them. I will tell you this, though. When I got back into Battletech, I bought immediately yeah. all of the Alpha Strike box eBay, sets. everything you could get your hands on, right? Just because. And I had no idea. Within six months, yeah. they were $50 a box, $100 a box. Crazy. Because you couldn't that's get all, them. Yeah, so they, nobody made them. I don't know. Anyway. Do you think um, it's going to influence, like, the Iron Wind prices? That's a good question. I mean, I did see Iron Wind. like, I mean, $12 a mech, $10 that's a, a yeah, mech, something not cheap. Like that. And, like, I was just looking at one. I was I almost bought at the um And the they're not catapult. scale. They can't fix that stuff because they would need to redo a whole new mold. Well, they, they have... a model like this, They right? do have new um, new sculpts. But how, how many? Not many. That's what I mean. Like, they, they can't redo their whole line. That's, yeah, like, they, in, that, that would be feasible. a huge investment. Yeah. Yeah. And for right. what? I mean, there, there's already... Yeah. So it's a weird thing where it's like this rock and a hard place. Like I, I'm not going to buy Iron Wind to supplement these because they just are jarringly different. It's like playing a different game now. Well, I mean, it's interesting. There are some Iron Wind models that I think hold up really well over time. Like the original Ralphart the Battlemaster, relatively. I mean, it looks relatively the same. Where's my? Oh, he's so good. Uh, I yeah, and that the, 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 the new ones obviously got a lot more detail, but the old one still holds up. Uh, the Highlander, uh, there's a Highlander model uh, that I think Iron Man did a, a great job with. It's real big, it's real chunky, it looks like a 90 ton mech. It weighs like 90 tons. It actually, yeah, it falls over all the time, it's so heavy. <laughs> um, but there's a few of them, I think. I see I'm, them. Yeah, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking at my shelf trying to think. There's a few other ones, but like... Who's it do with the giant... Sh that's not a Phoenix Hawk, is it with the giant thrusters over its shoulder? Yeah, yeah, who is that? Uh, yeah, there's a Phoenix Hawk on the bottom shelf. No, the looking. top, the red and the red. Oh, that's a Mauler. That's actually a, so uh, good looking. That's a 3D print. Oh, okay. Well, yes. there, that's why I like it. There yeah. you go. And that's what I was going to say when you were saying about like mechs that haven't been made and all this. Like, there is a way to supplement them in between Catalyst yeah, releasing them. Yeah. Is like they're probably already a model somewhere that they're, somebody's they're, printing. Yeah, yeah. So if, you're, if that's like a heart string puller for you, you can probably get one and they can fix the scale. Like that because right. it's in a. I, I'm gonna. I like to curse too much. I'm just gonna curse and you know, but it's just in an effing computer, right? Yeah. And yeah, so you fix stuff. it, and it's scaled. And yeah. You, right. They type in twelve percent, and they print it a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, the three D prints, and I mean, so there are some really good ones out there, right? Polygon Masterworks. He has the resin printer. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, he that, that molar's not from him. That's actually from Chad, our, our buddy Chad. He print he prints stuff all Shout the time. Shout out to Chad. Shout out to Chad. Um, architect himself. Yeah, and you know, and he was like, "Oh, I want to, you know, you want anything? I just want anyone to play with this printer." I was like, "Yeah, sure, for me a Mauler because I didn't have one." So, um, that's oh, great. That, the Mauler's from the chat. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and the annihilator in front of it too. He printed me a couple. So, you know, that's cool. 
Um, I mean, the 3D prints clearly are not the, tiny the same level of quality. How tiny the Marauder is. I'm going to take that. We're like, sitting here staring at the show. I'm going to take a picture for everybody. Yeah. Uh, so anyway. That's but yeah, prints. you got 3D prints, you know, which are okay. Some of them are very high quality, like Polygon. You know, there no, is something to be said about... I'm going to argue that. Till I think the, the Iron Wind, some of the Iron Wind sculpts, I think, are really, really good. Do you know where I think Iron Wind shines? Vehicles, um, aerospace fighters... Like, that's where I think their sweet spot is. I mean, I think I love the Bulldogs, the yeah. Strikers, like, all of those little tanks. Listen, I'll let you have this one. I'm not going to argue that point. We'll, we'll let him have a win. No. I'm not, yeah. not going to dig this into the ground. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's funny we get into the, the not the economics, but the, I don't know. The, what's the word for it? The ecosystem the of The business Battletech? dynamics of Battletech. Yeah, no, just more like the, the from the gamer's perspective, like where things are yeah. and uh, and where where I'm thinking about buying stuff and all that. It's, uh, it's a very interesting time. And it's funny because like literally when we were scooping up all the mechs we could find, like, I was bidding on stuff on eBay and like yeah. we're, I, I got so many of those Alpha Strike minis. I must have 50 of them and they're so goofy. And like they were to, premiere at the time, but I, I got them, and then literally it's like, hey, we're gonna do a Kickstarter, like no joke. It was like within months, and I'm like, great. So I never even painted them because I was like, I'm not even gonna bother. I don't even want to. I know. Yeah, it's crazy. Just and, and you I'm know, I'm glad I waited. They to don't. Promise. They just don't. Detail wise, I thought they were okay, but scale wise, they just don't hold up. Yeah, even detail. I, there's even. nothing I love more than the fact that all of these menus are scaled correctly. I've said it a million times. Uh, it's just, yeah. they're, it's just it soothes okay. you when you look at them when you when you have OCD. I mean, not to trivialize OCD, but like when you have OCD tendencies, you know, you're yeah. like, ah, oh, I can breathe because there's no weird like this. This heavy is smaller than the the light, you know. <laughs> I mean, well, Matt and I were talking the other night. There's this uh, there's this Dark Age uh, Capellan mech. It's got it's got a goofy name. It's got a very ethnic name, like you know, I don't Tenchi. know. No, no, oh. like the Lao Ho Dung or something. Okay. I don't Even, know. Yeah. Anyway. It is an incredible sculpt. I have one. It's awesome. There's so much detail on it. And it's like an 85 ton mech. It's like this big. Oh, <laughs> it kills back. you. Kills and I'm you, like, because yeah. I want it. I want they to use never it. Fix it's so that. cool. No, yeah, it's just, it's crazy. It is what it is. And when that was <sighs> all there was, everything was misscaled and it worked. It, it worked. Fine. I know. Now, it, now it, it doesn't. Now my eyes can't unsee it. Yeah, it's 80 or AK and BK. Before Kickstarter and after Kickstarter. <laughs> I was like, where are you? I was like, Burger King? Well, I'm getting hungry, bro. <laughs> like, Arby's and Burger King? No. Oh, my goodness. All right, well, listen, a couple quick things before we wrap this, this stream of consciousness up. Welcome to my brain. Number one, if you want to get some of these great minis, okay, or if you want Iron Wind stuff or vehicles, which is what I love, the aerospace, the vehicles, so I do, where, oh where can you get them from? Aries Games and Minis. Aries. Derek's awesome. He's got all the Army Painter stuff, which you used on your Max. Uh, they're phenomenal paints. Yeah. Um, I think they're great quality. And yeah, I mean, it's got the price. Kickstarter stuff. Yeah. The Battle of, uh, of Two Kid book is not uh, it's not available for sale. I think anywhere outside of the Catalyst site quite yet. Um, but he does have all the other books. You know, if yeah. you want novels, if you want um, the rule books of the Alpha Star Commanders Edition or Total War, whatever you need. Uh, that is my number one place to go for uh, Catalyst products, uh, Ironwind products, Army Painter, yeah. great stuff. Um, and anybody who's bought from knows the the shipping is fast. He packages the stuff really well. Awesome. Yeah. Again, it's it's the same like when you look on them and you're like, oh, everything's scaled properly. Like when you find a gaming store that it's properly packages cares. stuff. Yeah, yeah it's, he cares. The dude it, cares. He's yeah. awesome. Um, yeah, everything comes real nice and neat, very fast. And he's communicative, right? So, you know, that's important, too. We wish everybody was like that. It's true. So, guys, if you're looking for a place to get your Battletech stuff, Aries games and minis. Um, and other than that, you know, a couple other quick shout-outs. We talked about uh, Matt Birdsall, Colonel Matt Steiner. Colonel Matthew Steiner, I believe it is on Instagram. Uh, check out his stuff. It's so good. So good. Um, you can see the stuff that he's he a nice guy. for us. Yeah, he's an awesome dude. Yeah. Um, you know, keep an eye out. Sometimes he does the, um, the uh, Twitch the live stuff, which is great, um, you know, just to watch, watch the master in action. Uh, Tom mentioned the camo spec site, also yeah. awesome. So guys, check that out. Um, you know, we, we love the camo specs guys; they're awesome. Um, had Ryan on the channel, 
and uh, and Dale recently um, Hardware Dale Studios. Dale. Oh God. Okay, so Dale's one of Dude. the leading artists there, but also has Hardware Studios. You know, this stuff is next level. So if you're looking for some urban terrain that drop shit. ships. Oh. Oh my gosh, it's awesome. It. He's got so much great stuff, so check that yeah. out. It fits um, so well with the new mechs. Not it's to, so not well. To keep not to keep harping stuff. on it, but right, like yeah. just the, the dynamics, it all, it all works. Um, and if you're looking for like scatter terrain, like resin stuff, X marks. Um, oh yeah. I just recently bought a whole bunch of stuff from there, and it's so easy. You know, you just clean it, a little soap and water, right? You spray paint it. I actually started using textured spray paint. I was, uh, I even, was even on the resin stuff? I cheat. Okay. I'm just like, Psst, and it looks like concrete, and I'm done. You know, I put it on the table. It's awesome. It brings your table to life. Um, Did you ever so, use that on the Forge World stuff? Never. This is the first time. Actually, Dale recommended it yeah, yeah. on the building. He's like, I do remember. it real light. You know, I was like, well, I guess I'll try it. Uh, and I bought all sorts of colors. You know, I base them in one color, and I do like a sandstone, and this, I do a, a beach pebble in another one, you know, it gives them all sort of a different look, <laughs> uh, which is real cool. Seagull beak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so Hardware Studios, X Marks, they're the places for terrain. Also, Ares has some of those old Ironwind buildings, which we still use. Um, yeah. They're, they're resin, too. They're pretty cool. They're cool. Um, and, you know, we talked about Polygon Masterworks. Also great. So. Um, oh, yeah. The 3, the 3, if you're, I mean, if you want, like, legit, like, 3D printed yeah, MechWarrior anything. online sculpts, um, you know, which are. He does non MWO stuff too, right? Non mech war. He does some commission, like non battle tech stuff yeah, too. I believe he does. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. Um, so he's he's just really gifted with that. Um, so really good stuff, and he's got some good good uh, equipment as well. And Patreon, right? We that's oh, the yeah. other way we we can support this channel. We we're right. just, <laughs> we we're just talking about end of year um, accounting, and I'm still blown away by it. That's but cost online. Yeah. So I mean, well, it, we're in an investment period. I'm in an yeah, investment yeah. period. But yeah, so through I Patreon know a Kickstarter, I spent a lot of money on. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but through Patreon, you know, you get perks from us at different tiers, and you yeah. also help support yeah. this. And it's we, you know, we really value it. Thank you. And, yeah, uh, thanks to all of our patrons. Not. Yeah, you know, that's uh, it's, it. Really means a lot, you know, and it's a great place to interact with us. Um, yeah, we're gonna point. keep trying to pump it benefits. <sighs> yeah, um, either you know, live stream. We've been talking about some live streaming stuff. We have the competitions, all sorts of uh, pick, you know, pick my forces and fun stuff like that. So. You know, Pretty cool. If you're into that kind of stuff, check it out. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, uh, that wraps us up. We've uh, we've been talking for a while now. I don't even want to. I mean, you know, I'm sure you probably just have us on in the background while you're painting, but uh, hopefully you picked up a couple of fun tidbits. Yeah. If you're painting these mechs, you've painted one of them during this whole thing. Maybe one. Maybe one. You're probably I'm sorry. still finishing off the barrel. Oh, good news. Your holidays one. coming up. You get some time off. Yeah. How better to hide from your family than to paint a bunch of miniatures in your basement? That's right. That's right. Tis the season. Tis the season. <laughs> well, guys, listen, thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed listening to us ramble for the last uh, 90 minutes or so. Uh, but, of course, feel free to leave a comment. Give us a like. Don't forget to subscribe. That's a big Everybody one. Everybody likes to sub. Love subscriptions. Yeah. Uh, big and other than that, any, any Italian sub. <laughs> Uh, no, not that kind. But I could go for that. Oh. Ever since you said Burger King now, I'm oh, starving. Yeah. So hungry. Uh, any closing thoughts? No, yeah, hey man, everybody enjoy the holidays, you know, mm -hmm. spend some time gaming if you can, yeah. uh, encourage your family to play, uh, you and know. subscribe. Yeah, it's so funny because, yeah, all these, all these families are like, oh, we'll play a board game, like, no, 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 no. we're playing a war game. We're playing Alpha Yeah, Street. and you, like, throw the battle mat across the, the dinner <sighs> table, there's, like, a turkey under it, you're just like, let's play, that's terrain. That's terrain, that's a, that's a level 10 hill. <laughs> Right over it's the good. carcass. But yeah, yeah. don't think, man, especially Alpha Strike, like, you can get kids to play this game and they love it. So. I actually did a post on Instagram. Uh, one, of my, one of my girls was playing the other night, nice. Friday night. We're doing a little, I mean, you know, she's six, so. I've got my kids. You know, she, she mostly gets it. Yeah. She was using the forest for cover. I was very impressed. And then you're like, I'm on a raised terrain. It doesn't work. <laughs> and then you just <laughs> killed her. Smashed the trees. <laughs> Oh, you God. idiot! <laughs> what is this? The school for ants? Pay attention to your surroundings! Oh, oh my God, it's insane. for ants. That's good. Good reference. <laughs> but yeah, no, seriously, enjoy your holidays. Uh, yes, happy holidays, guys. Uh, happy New Year. Hopefully 2021 is, uh, is uh, a little better than the last, you know. But hey, at least we have Battletech. And each other. It's true. There could be another Kickstarter in 2021. Yes. Okay. Well, guys, have a great night. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned. Always great stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming. Have a good night. See you guys.